Frenzy Plant. We've had the stats on this move for a while now, but how does it compare to Solar Beam? Well, this is a clip from my live stream swag tips where I go over just that. In addition to that, I also explore a new concept, new concept, that uh, Game Press and I are currently exploring called Damage Squared per Energy Second. Sort of a, uh, a new kind of lay way to get a simple idea of how good each attacks are. Enjoy. So this is from my grass type content from like uh, two months ago, I believe, where I went over the history of grass types and sort of how like Groudon and Ho-Oh are like treading in on their grass type turf with their solar beams and their legendary stats. And I compared their charge moves then. And what we found with that content was that Grass Knot, Power Whip, and Leaf Blade are all better than Solar Beam. In fact, they're consistently better than Solar Beam. So the red line here, that's Solar Beam. Grass Knot, Power Whip, and Leaf Blade, those are these three lines up here that are all doing roughly the same. Uh, Petal Blizzard sucks, <laughs> Seed Bomb sucks, and Energy Ball. Uh, we knew that was going to be a bad one, and it is a bad one. So that's what we knew back then. So we got Power Whip, and this is supposed to be the good one. And you can see that its base power is 90, and its move cooldown is 2.6, making its damage per second. It's like very simple DPS, 34.62. Let's look at Frenzy Plant here. And you see that its base power is 100, and its cooldown is 2.8 seconds, and its uh, damage per second, the simple DPS, is 35.71. So it stands to reason that it would be a better move but as we know this is only one way of looking at charge move damage it doesn't give you the full comprehensive kind of dps view that uh bioweapons guide has but it's like you know we, we want an easy way to eyeball this stuff right going through this i have the results here i'm gonna go over them with you but it's like you know it, wouldn't it be nice to just kind of eyeball a move and know if it's good or not and not have to like use some crazy comprehensive like gradient kind of model uh, well, there is another dimension to charge moves that you can look at simply just by the quality of the charge move called damage per energy. So that's the damage that you're getting per energy value. And it also provides a decent way to check the value of like a multi-bar charge move versus a single bar one or like a three bar to a two bar to a one bar. You can't do that with DPS because obviously the DPS is going to be much better for the bigger move. So for like the more energy cost move, but the damage per energy, oh, that's where it's coming from, right? If you're thinking about that, well, that's already pretty misleading, you know, damage per energy. You can already think about how that'd be bad. Like, let's say we got a move that's like five times the damage per energy of any other move, but it's DPS is like, it takes an hour. <laughs> Extreme example, it takes an hour to do this move and it does like infinity damage. Is that a better move? Well, it takes you an hour to use it, so probably not. And then on the other side of the force, DPS, that can't really be the end-all be-all at some point. If you're still on the fence, you're like, what's this damage per energy stuff, Ryan Swag? Well, for DPS, consider a move that does 10 damage, but it does, and it does that 10 damage in 0.1 second, right? That has a DPS of 100. And right now, the strongest charge move in Pokemon Go is Sky Attack, and that has DPS of 40. So that's like, that's over twice the amount of that DPS, but it's 10 damage for the charge move. So obviously, there has to be a point where damage per energy and, like, DPS kind of intersect. You know, you want both to be good, but which one's the more good, which one's the less good? So we're looking at, the, so the Game Press team, we were talking about this, because we would like to have an easy, simple way for people to check and see if a move's good or not. DPS just isn't doing it. DPE, damage per energy, isn't going to do it either. Uh, so we're probably going to implement this soon, or maybe we won't implement it at all. Right now we're in discussion about it, which is why I'm bringing it up, because it's a pretty fascinating topic for people that get fascinated by Pokemon Go numbers. It was presented that in this like one like blog uh, that you could multiply the dpe by the like the animation time so it's sort of like the damage per energy per second if you were to go about it that way then the multi-bar charge moves like three bar ones like even more multi-bar than usual those ones would stand out more than anything else in a really exaggerated way to the point where it's like obviously those aren't going to be the good moves what we're looking at doing is multiplying the dps by the dpe so it'd be like the damage per 
how gosh how would i word that like the damage squared per energy second well what we found with that after like a pretty lay just like an initial kind of foray into that 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 would be like an interesting way to simply compare charge moves so let's see let's see how uh power whip frenzy plant and solar beam how they all compare with that oh yeah i guess another qualitative way to kind of sell you guys on dpe a little bit is uh so we all know that in poke battler sims and also in go battle sims uh, and all simulators in general that tell you what dps is all about and which attacks are good in pokemon go uh, that solar beam is always reputed as being better than Petal Blizzard, which doesn't make sense because they're both single bar charge moves, and you can see that solar beam has this 36.73 uh, DPS. And if you go to Petal Blizzard, you'll see that it has a 42.31 DPS. So you'd think like, Ryan Swag, clearly Petal Blizzard should be better, it's got more DPS, they're both single bar charge moves. <laughs> it doesn't have the DPE of solar beam. So that's why DP is important, but let's get out of this and get into the real here. So it's 100 base power and it's 50 energy, right? So we want to know what the damage per energy is. So the DP is 2. Go to, uh, well we already know what the base damage is for power whip. Power whip's 90. I'm not in the mood for mental math even though it's not that hard, 1.8. And then what's the damage per energy on solar beam? Well solar beam's 180. Now this is going to be pretty obvious, isn't it? Yeah, it's also 1.8. Power Whip is 34.62 times 1.8. So that's 62.316. Frenzy Plant, we assume is going to be better. Actually, it can only be better. It'd be weird if it wasn't. Oh yeah, that's way better. <laughs> 71.42. And then Solar Beam, that's 66. Yeah, so according to this, the Frenzy Plant is once again the better charge move, having a damage squared per energy second of 71.42, where Power Whip is about 62 and Solar Beam is about 66. So it's just a, an interesting way of looking at charge moves that we've been discussing recently. I haven't really had time to like go over it myself too much, so I figured it'd be fun to... Go over it with you guys, um, but let's go on to that <laughs> scheduled content. Let's get to the real, the, the hard numbers, not this fancy trying to make sense out of something simple. This is essentially the comprehensive DPS gradient that Double Felix and Bioweapon came up with. Uh, you might have seen the post on Reddit. It was describing Outrage versus uh, Draco Meteor. And if you saw my Outrage Draco Meteor content, went over that there. In my Lugia content, I talked about this and I just took the end numbers and I was like, that's the range. But here you can see it. So this is the complete range for Power Whip and the complete range for Solar Beam. And so Power Whip's 19.68 to 23.44. And Solar Beam is 19.587 to 22.79959718. So what I did is I took this Solar Beam and I subtracted it from Power Whip to see like where power ups better, where solar beam better. And so looking at this, the comprehensive DPS of the two, power whip minus solar beam, it seems like a majority of the time, like a vast majority of the time, power whip is better than solar beam. Which, Ryan Swag, we already knew that. We saw your graph. I know, I know. There are times where solar beam is better than power whip. What about Frenzy Plant? Frenzy Plant is 20.47 to 24.615 so uh, clearly <laughs> solar beam doesn't have anything on this and i subtracted them and there are no situations here in this comprehensive dps cycle that frenzy plant is worse than solar beam solar beam is always less than frenzy plant according to comprehensive dps now this is nice and all fancy number gradient man but what does that really translate to in the battles that we experience yeah this is nice but what's really going on so this is kind of a update to that old graph i showed you from the history of grass types content instead of using executor as the base uh this one uses venusaur as a base and it compares all the grass type charge moves so frenzy plant power whip Leaf Blade, Solar Beam, Seed Bomb, Petal Blizzard, and Energy Ball. 
So once again, we're seeing Energy Ball sucks. Uh, Seed Bomb and Petal Blizzard, not so hot. And uh, then we got Solar Beam here, which is less than the other moves, once again. And yeah, it looks like here, Frenzy Plant is a smidge better than Power Whip. But that doesn't seem like that big of a deal. Like, come on, Niantic, why go through the trouble of making a whole new move if it's only slightly better than something that is very similar to it. So this is a very aggressive matchup. It's against the Hydro Pump Kyogre. Comparing a single bar charge move in this is kind of unfair. You know, it's at a disadvantage because the Hydro Pump's gonna hit you and it'll KO you often before you can get off your next Solar Beam. So I made a graph for a more light situation. So this is a level 40 Venusaur with all the different charge moves against a tier 3 Aqua Tail Vaporeon. So this way, Solar Beam has a chance to get off more Solar Beams, and everything has a chance to get off more charge moves in general. And what we're seeing here is that in this light scenario, Solar Beam starts to pick up over <clears throat> Leaf Blade. They're about the same, like on average, they have small advantages over each other. Uh, but Power Whip and Frenzy Plant are still much better than Solar Beam. In fact, if you look at the Frenzy Plant Sims, it looks like there is never a situation where Solar Beam has anything on it. So I think with all of this considered, it is safe to say that Frenzy Plant is better than Solar Beam. And also better than Power Whip. Took you through a whole bunch of shit to get here. Aren't you glad you stopped in? Frenzy Plant, way better than Solar Beam, but Venusaur gets Frenzy Plant. Executor doesn't have Frenzy Plant. Executor has Solar Beam. When we last left off with Grass-type Pokemon, we were like, man, Executor is the best. If Venusaur got Power Whip, it might be better than Executor. Well now, Venusaur has something better than Power Whip. It's got Frenzy Plant. So this does this make it better than Executor? Well, uh, that's where I spent most of my time making graphs, so <laughs> let's get into that. So that was a clip from my live stream swag tips where I went over Frenzy Plant versus Solar Beam. If you're curious about Executor versus Venusaur, that's a, a new video coming up shortly. Uh, I will have it out before Sunday. So if you are interested in seeing that content and you're not subscribed to me already, I think you know what you gotta do. If you're curious about any other kind of charge moves, how they compare, uh, comment below, let me know what you'd like to see and maybe I'll rope in an analysis on that. If you're curious about Blast Burn and Hydro Cannon, I also explored that in the live stream, and that's kind of like a bonus stream cut that will be out eventually, so subscribe for that too. <laughs>